Thank you for joining the Gore Downey and Cheney Winjack Fund to celebrate National Indigenous History Month. Our digital events this year carry the themes of hope, unity, and celebration. We are so grateful to have you join us. DWF is proud to present these events and bring Indigenous and non-Indigenous people together. And to learn the history of Indigenous people and to share and celebrate Indigenous history, knowledge, and talent. We carry on this work all year through DWF's programs, including Legacy Schools, Legacy Spaces, and the Artist Ambassador Program, and events such as Secret Path Week and Walk for Winjack. Let me also tell you that we are grateful to have you join us. We think that National Indigenous History Month is an opportunity for everyone to learn a little bit more about their country and its deep, deep history. My Uncle Cheney's story is now being told to over 2,000 schools across Canada, and we are honoring his legacy when we recognize and honor the Indigenous peoples of Turtle Island. Miigwech, Gawichushiank, Kapipmu Satamang. Thank you for walking this journey with us. Take care, and I hope you enjoy this month. Watcha, watcha. Genas kemite na mesve. Stefan Friday nina tis na kazan kisichuan nina duschin. My name is Stefan Friday. I am Cree, and I'm from Kasatchewan First Nation. I am coming to you live from the Treaty Nine Territory. A little bit about myself. I am the owner and operator of Eagle Western Enterprises, also the co-founder and director of Hockey Indigenous, a nonprofit organization that aims to empower Indigenous youth and Indigenous communities across Turtle Island. And I am currently the research assistant at the Nation Rebuilding Initiative at Mashkiko Council. Welcome to the Gord Downey and Chani Winjak Fund Indigenous History Month special for the James Bay region. This year's themes are hope, unity, and celebration. Join us in celebrating the unique traditions, cultures, and contributions of Indigenous people in the James Bay region as we come together to celebrate Indigenous History Month. I'm so excited about today. Today's episode, we will feature amazing music from Vern Chichu, Lawrence Martin, and the tragically hip cover band, The Poets. We will also have Peter Kapishishit, we will be doing amazing teachings about the Tamarack Goose. And last but not least, we will also have Serena Kristajin, who will be speaking about Shannon's dream. Today, I would like to acknowledge that we are in the Cree traditional territory of the Ininoak Aski and Iu Ishchi of James Bay region. We are so excited to have you today. Thank you for joining us today. See you soon. What year, Ms. Sue? What year? My name is uh, Kirby Miaskum. I come from the Muscree First Nation up in the James Bay area, Treaty 9 area. And uh, very honored today. I've been asked to do the opening with a song and a few words. And uh, the Treaty 9 area in the James Bay area from our coastal communities, east and west coast, and bring Greetings to you all and to our neighboring First Nations across the lands as we are celebrating here today of listening to our stories, our own words, in our own words from our people across these lands of understanding of who we are, where we come from, our history, from our own words, from our, our own song. We survived through all these years through our ceremonial ways our way of life. Although we've lost a lot in our language and ceremonial ways, we survived and now we're learning our language again. And there's a lot of support from our elders from our distant past and today from our elders and from our non-Indigenous communities, we have a lot of support be able to bring this together as we're celebrating National Indigenous Month. And in the words of our elders, we're distant past. 
We are told to practice kindness, generosity, honor, and respect. To carry these in a good way in our hearts and our minds and our spirit. To be able to share, to bring a good way of life to future generations. So that we can have a better tomorrow. We are here today sharing our story, our way of life, in our own words. I hope you have a, a good day listening and sharing these, listening to these songs, listening to these words, these stories from our elders and those that are still here with us today from the residential school and survivors. So we sing this song to honor the 215 we discovered. Sing this song to remind you you bring peace and harmony in a good way with this song to my community, to your community. The song was composed by myself and my brother, late brother, Gilbert Chichi. I refer to it as a flag song, veteran song. Ask me then, Monsieur.
mind So I'm at your house this morning Just a little after nine Cause it was in Bob Cajun Where I saw the constellations Reveal themselves one star at a time Cup of cheese sitting in some gas one. I'm a Cree from uh, Moose Factory. I've been making tamaracks for the last 40 years or so. Learned from my brother George, late brother George. And uh, just uh, go through some of the steps that I do in making the tamaracks. Tools that you need for making your tamaracks you need a needle. I use a couple of sizes, two different sizes. Tin snips cutting the twigs and a utility knife and different sizes of strings so first of all I, I pick my tamaracks in the in the fall and uh, when the temperatures are below uh, say 10 minus 10 and warmer I gotta pick them in the fall because we gotta make sure that um, the uh, the needles come off of the uh, of the tamarack so I'll pick uh, the twigs to the size that I want and uh, to the size of the bird that I'm going to make and any small ones that I don't need I throw in a box and uh, this is what I use to make a ball. Start shaping, uh, making the bird. I'll get my twigs and I'll lay them on a piece of string. I'll lay my twigs right across. You make sure when you're making your bird is that your twigs are nice and straight. The tamarack bird originated here in Moose Factory. Individual by the name of John Blue Boy, probably around the uh, mid 60s. So you bring the uh, twigs up around the ball, you're covering the ball. And this is the uh, starting to form the goose. So I just tighten my string nice and tight. So from here, what I want to do is uh, I burn the the wax string that I tied around the head and the tail, just so that uh, your wax string doesn't slide off. The next stage after this is the sewing of the bird. I've cut three legs for uh, for this goose. This is the only goose that has three legs. I put one at the back, as you can see the wax string that's there, I'll line the back with the um, with my lap leg that I'm going to put at the back and I'll put the, the two on the front of the bird, so I'll have three legs on this bird. And there's your tamarack bird. Thanks for watching, miigwech.
Watch you at my sway. Serena Gostadjian National House. Hello, everybody. My name is Serena Gostadjian. I was asked to speak on behalf of my late sister and what she was put on this earth to do. Um, I suppose it all goes back to Attawapiskut, where we're originally from. And we had a school at one point, but due to the contamination of mold, it had to be closed down. I myself had the experience of in that school for at least a couple of years, but memories are vague. Shannon never experienced being in a real school. Because of that building being closed down, they transferred all the students to be put in placed in portables. These portables were not suitable for um, receiving good education. I believe it was only when my parents wanted to send me down um, to Nealisca to receive better education, but I couldn't go alone. So my late sister like, uh, decided that, what if I go with her? And I loved the idea that I wouldn't, didn't have to be alone when I go to school. So we were both shipped down to uh, Nealisca where we stayed there for about three years. But I remember the first week when we got there, Shannon couldn't believe like what a real school actually looked like. I still remember to this day where we were walking along the sidewalk of the school and she would ask me, Serena, like, is this what a school is supposed to look like? Is this a real school? And I told her, yes, this is what a school is supposed to look like. And she's like, we're very lucky. We're very lucky to be here. I told her, I know. And then she started thinking about our, our younger siblings back home, thinking about how they would have to go through portables as she did and not knowing, not knowing what a real school is like. So she didn't want, she didn't want um, the younger generation to ever experience that again. So what we did is that we went on a rally where we started speaking about the problems in Canada. So we brought up the, so Shannon and I brought up the situation of of having no school in Atawapiskat. And you should have seen the support and the people and especially children. Children came together from all over Canada, writing letters to us, saying they support us, saying they agree that all children, no matter what color, no matter what race, deserves equal education as the rest of them in Canada. So Shannon and I, unfortunately, Shannon didn't live long enough to see that Attawapiskit finally received a new school. And to this day, I know that she'd be so proud of what we've done. How all of us in Canada work together and we finally have a new school. Now we know, now we know that the children, the younger generation in Attawapiskit have a better chance to make it in life. All because it took a girl one girl's voice to spark it all up. So this is my late sister here. Shannon Kostajan. She passed away in a car accident, but I know that she'd be proud of, of what we succeeded for sure. But that's a little thing I'd like to share for now. I'd like to thank uh, Gord Downey and the Chani Winchek Fund for allowing me this opportunity. And that be it. Miigwech. Hello, Watya. Gitchi Miigwech. Thank you for joining us today. Together we are learning, growing, and celebrating the indigenous people of the James Bay region. What I love about our people, whether you are in Inano or in Iyo, is that we all share that same passion each and every day. We love to go hunting. We love to go trapping. And we love to go fishing. Not fishing for your cousin, you never sick. Yeah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But seriously, that is our passion. It is our Cree value. It is our Cree traditional teachings. A Cree principle that's important to us because it is our Cree destiny. Another thing I wanted to talk about too is why is Indigenous History Month important? Everybody knows what have transpired in British Columbia at a former residential school. 
the discovery of 215 babies, 215 children, 215 generations that we will never get back. And that's only the tip of the tip of an iceberg. Another thing that's been ongoing is the racism, specifically in the hockey world of Edmonton Oilers defenseman Ethan Bear. Canada is supposed to be a first world country, first class, but it is treating the indigenous people as second class citizens living in third world environments. That is why reconciliation is needed more than ever. But our people are strong and our people are resilient. Never forget about that. A teaching I wanted to share with you all is coming from the teaching of my grandfather, David Friday Sr. He's a hunter, trapper, and fisher all of his life. He's in his 70s and he's still growing out today since he was a child. A teaching that he taught me is that blood is thicker than water. I'll let you think about what it means to you. Elaborate that with yourself. But what it means to me is that stay true to yourself. And I integrate that with our people because our creep blood is, makes us who we are. It's, if you think about it, it's, the, it's outside of the border of Ontario and Quebec. We shouldn't have to in, use that entitlement. We're all, we all come from the same blood, the Cree people. I get a migots. Chani Wenjak was an Anishinaabe boy born on January 19, 1954, in Ogoki Post, a remote indigenous community in northwestern Ontario. When Chani was only nine, he and three of his sisters were sent to the Cecilia Jeffrey Indian Residential School in Kenora, Ontario. Three years later, Chani ran away so he could be with his family some 600 kilometers away. His body was found one week later. He died in the cold alone. He was just 12 years old, like me. The Gore Downey and Chani Wenjack Fund aims to build cultural understanding as a way to create a path toward reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. Playing a vital role in this mission, it's the Legacy Schools Program. The program is a free national initiative to engage students and educators in the work of reconciliation through awareness, education, and connection. Legacy school educators receive a free toolkit, resources for grades K to 12, monthly newsletters, and access to special appearances and events. Gord Downey challenged all Canadians to do something. Do something to raise awareness. Do something to educate yourself and others about the history and lives of Indigenous people. Do something that improves the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. Reconcilia actions are the answer to Gord's call, recognizing that change starts with each of us. These can be one big action involving the whole community or small actions that help to create daily change one step at a time. The time to do something is now. Is now. Is now. For more information and to sign up to become a Legacy School, go to LegacySchools.ca. We are brilliant as the snow, 10 million years of Adam's glow, shining through the deepest night. Trust the stars to bring Oh,
in my head and what's in the chest I'm not gonna stop I'm just catching my breath they're not gonna stop please just let me catch my breath I am the stranger You can see me Hi, my name is Lawrence Martin Otherwise known as Wapistan Wapistan in the Cree language of the Meshagok people Is that little Martin That's what uh, my grandfather was called when he uh, Was growing up and so I assumed the name when I got older and I've used it in my music. So the song I want to sing to you is called The Elders. And The Elders is about, of course, our people that we all often go to, to listen and to get stories and inspirations and to give us hope about what the, th the things that we want to deal with and have to deal with. And they give us all kinds of information that we can actually go on with and provide the teachings, teachings to other people. So I wrote the song on behalf of that, it's done in both uh, English and Cree, and it goes like this.
Good evening, folks. I'd like to share a song with you. So, a song called Lonesome and Hurtin' that was written by a good friend of mine, uh, Roland Najwan from the uh, Batuana First Nation, and uh, recorded this song back in 1993. And many of you might have seen it on the Dance Me Outside uh, movie, in which it was featured. But I also wanted to uh, just say, Hello to all. I know there's a lot of people out there that are probably homebound because of this virus that's going on. So here's a song for you. It was truly nice to see you all today. Gitchamigach, thank you so much for joining us today for the Downey Renjik Fund Indigenous History Month. It's been great to share some music, amazing culture, and wonderful teachings from the Mashkego region. It is important to know that it is Indigenous History Month. It's important to remember, it's important to endure and it's important to implement our traditional teachings each and every day 
of our life. And in, and in accordance to that, it is also Pride Month. It's important to acknowledge our LGBTQTS people. It's all exclusive, it's all love, and it's all the same. We all have a role to play in reconciliation. Subscribe to the Downey Rendrick Fund newsletter and follow Downey Rendrick Fund on social media at Downey Rendrick to continue the conversation. Do something. Egede. Migrets. <laughs>